Welcome to the third video of the Foundry's Camera Tracker for After Effects 101 training series. In this video we'll be looking at using the Point Cloud Feature Preview, setting ground planes and creating After Effects solids and nulls. Now let's take a step back and look at some of the options for viewing your scene and setting various parameters. I'm just going to switch back on my 2D layer and select my Camera Tracker effect again. Now if I click on the menu button you can see down here it'll pop up a whole range of sub-items. First off, ones we've looked at so far, such as tracking, solving and creating scene, but also those for dealing with a whole range of additional options. First up, let's take a look at the point cloud options, namely this Toggle 2D 3D here. Now, this is a visualization device which allows us to see all the feature points at their calculated 3D positions. If I hit this option, my render will change to a 3D representation of my points. I can bring up the unified camera tool and now rotate around and dolly into the scene. Like so. Now I can do all this because I'm looking through my custom view. If I was looking through my active camera, I'd be looking through from the point of view of the camera which the scene was created with. And of course if I toggle between 2D and 3D you can see that the points correspond to feature points in the overlay. However the problem is if I started to rotate here and I would of course be putting my uh, creative camera out of alignment. So if you do that undo or hit create scene over here to get back to where you were. So what can you use the feature view for? Well first off we can use it for visualizing and setting our ground plane. Since Camera Tracker can't know the absolute movement of the camera, only the relative movement, we need to be able to easily set the orientation and origin of the entire scene, which is what this allows us to do. So I'm going to select a few of the points which I think live on the ground plane. Like so. And you see how they colour yellow in this overlay view. If I flip back into my 3D view using my tab hotkey, you can see how here they're also coloured yellow. Also note the grid lines that are getting drawn and the origin. When I set the points to be the ground plane, they're essentially going to snap onto or close to this ground plane, and the whole scene is going to be shifted so that the origin sits in the middle of the plane. Now I need to select three or more points to use the ground plane set to selected option here. If I select three, it'll fit a plane exactly to those. If I select four or more, it'll attempt to create a best fit plane for those points. So leaving the points selected, I'm going to hit this set to selected here. And you can see how now my points are getting offset up to my origin point here. Right, let's toggle back into 2D and take a look at some of the other ground plane options. So first of all, I'm going to reset my ground plane. So if I hold down command and click anywhere on the view, I can bring up the menu wherever I want it. So first of all, I'm going to reset. And now I can select a single point and set that to be just the origin. This is going to offset the entire scene, but it's not going to rotate it in any way. So I'm going to flip back into 3D using my tab hotkey again. And again, as a bit of a tip, if you hold down command and click and keep the mouse button held down, you'll find that it's very fast to update, unlike if you were to hold down command and click and then scroll across it and then click again. So set origin, and you can see how now that point is appearing at the origin of my ground plane. At this point I can set an orientation for the scene using the axis options. Here I'll pick two feature points which lie on a certain axis. So in this case let's say that this point here and this point here we want to be our x-axis. If I flip back into 3D and say ground plane set to X. It's going to rotate my scene to make those two lie on X. However, it'll leave my origin point at the center. If I select three or more points, it'll attempt to fit a best fit line through the points and use that to set the axis. Use this if you have a bunch of feature points roughly on the same line. Excellent stuff. 
So now that I've set the ground plane, I can also manually rotate, scale and offset the scene to my heart's content using the null that's created in the create scene function. You'd use this if, for example, the ground plane orientation isn't quite right and you want to tweak it, or if you've got some objects in your scene of a certain size and you want to scale the camera move to match it. Later on, we'll also look at using this null to offset the camera so as to use it with comp camera effects. So let's grab the null and crank the scale up to, say, 200. Then flip back into 3D and you'll see the points have moved out to match. Be aware that the 3D view won't update live to such changes as we have no way of knowing about the changes to the null. So you're currently looking at the 3D view. You'll need to force a re-render by moving around the scene. So if I tweak this back down to 100, say, and then bring up my camera, you see how they snap into place on that first move. Now we've got a scene with an A camera set up, oriented and scaled as we need. At this point we can start looking at creating objects in the context of that scene. To do this we're again going to be making use of the 3D feature preview and the end viewer menu. So once again I'm going to select a few feature points. In this case located on an item in my sequence at the depth at which I want to create a solid. The resultant solid is then going to stick to the surface of the object across the course of the sequence, even if the camera move goes away from it and back again since the object's location in 3D hasn't changed. You can then use this to stick all manner of motion graphics and visual effects elements in place. So once again by flipping into 3D I can judge if my points are good. So pop into 3D, look through my custom view, flip on my unified camera tool and then have a quick rotate around. So yeah, they look pretty good to me. If it didn't look good, I would simply click on the one that doesn't look right to deselect. And so if I br bring up my viewer menu by switching back to my selection tool and going to create solid. Now, if I have three points selected, it can fit an exact plane to that. If I have four or more, as I have here, it's going to try and fit a best fit solid to those points. So there we go. There we have it. That's looking pretty good to me according to those feature points. If I have one point, it'll uh, simply point it towards our camera. And if I have two, I can pick which axis I want it to be set on. So let's flip back to my 2D view. And it doesn't look good immediately. That's because I'm looking through my custom view. So of course, I want it to render through my active camera. So I pick my active camera and then scrub up and down the scene. And that's looking pretty good to me. Okay, so equally, as well as solids, we can actually create null objects. So if I'm going to select these points here, I can then go in and say, create me a best fit null object for that, or I can say, create me multiple objects, one for each feature point selected. And this will go away and create four nulls, as you can see there, stuck within the context of the scene. 